Hello, welcome to another video. Thank you all for 500 subscribers. It went very quickly actually. I've only been doing this for about half a year now. Um, but we're already at 500. And I don't know, as a way of thanking you or something, or because I just wanted it. I've got a new scope. Um, it is about 500 euros, so I think it fits pretty, pretty nicely. Um, or at least I paid for it 500 euros. The price went up, uh, I think, a couple of months ago. Um, and I just wanted to unbox it with you guys, uh, see what's inside, see what you might want to know about it. Um, adapters and such. Uh, so let's get into it. So I put the box, box down here on the ground, so I have a little bit more room here. And if I opened it up, um, there are two separate boxes, one for the coma corrector and another one with some other stuff. And of course the telescope, but I'll show that one in the end. Um, let's start with the coma corrector here. And as you can see it's pretty big. It's, there's my hand for scale. Um, it's quite a lot bigger than the co the reducer corrector that I have for my Schmidt Cassegrain. So I do expect it to be a bit better. Um, let's see here. And this is cool on drop or thingy on this side. And then just like that. And the first thing that I realized is that this is M84 threads, but on my camera, and I think most cameras, it is M42 or T2 uh, threads. What that means is that my camera doesn't fit on the coma corrector. So I had to buy a little adapter separately. Um, figure it out for yourself, you probably will have to do that too. Um, but that's this one. Uh, the, the back focus on this is 55 millimeters, which is pretty standard. Um, it's, it's almost always 55 millimeters. So. If you have the adapter laying around, that should be fine. That's that one. Then the other box. I bought one thing separately as well, and that is uh, a laser collimator because this thing is F3.45 with the corrector in place. It's going to be quite critical to get collimation right, and thus a laser collimator like this one will help you um, achieve good collimation. Um, I've tested it out already on the scope and it worked quite easily. It wasn't that that hard, luckily. If you want, I can make a video about this one as well um, and go into detail about how to collimate and what else. Um, please let me know that in the comments actually, because otherwise I won't know. Um, then we have to find the shoe uh, bracket thingy um, and just to attach your finder scope uh, to the telescope and the finder scope so I don't think I'll ever be using this because I'm just going to use plate solving but if you're interested there is in fact a finder scope in there Then the adapters, there's a few of them, um, first one's this one, so this is M, this 1.25 inch, so your average eyepiece, the smaller ones will fit in there, fit here, um, which attaches with two screws. And this one consists of two parts actually, so you can unscrew it here and then 
what you get is a adapter for M42. And you think, well, that's great, because then I can just use the comma corrector and just screw this on, and then I'll have a M48, M42 adapter. That's what I thought, but that it just doesn't work that way. Because I don't know what thread it is. I think it's M4, uh, it's two inch for things like filters and stuff. But these don't fit. As you can see, they don't fit. Um, which is pretty sad because otherwise there would have been included an M42, M48 adapter. Or M48 to M42 adapter. Which would have been been really nice, but it's not it doesn't work that way I guess. Um but yeah I, theoretically speaking I could attach my camera to the telescope using this guy. Um let's see. Because this one here um goes into a two inch holder, which is in fact supplied with it. So let's see. This one here. So this one goes in, in here like that and then you can screw it in with these two. And now what you have is M42 here, uh, attach your camera to it and on this side it slides into the telescope. So you could attach your camera to the telescope but you can't use the comma corrector that way. Which if you want to do any serious astrophotography always use the included comma corrector. Which in my opinion is a missed opportunity here, that, that we can't just attach M42 like this. And we have to buy a separate adapter, which is another 20 bucks. Um, yeah, that's basically all there is here. Um, but yeah, but it, it is nice that we can use eyepieces and whatnot, or something like a guide camera, which goes into 1.25 most often. Um, I saw that Quiff from Quiff the Lazy Geek on YouTube, he got eyepieces as well. So I think that's just to Japan and maybe maybe that region in general. Um, but here in Europe, I didn't get the eyepiece. Um, it's not that big of a deal because I don't want to use it visually anyway. But if, if you're planning on doing that, you'll have to purchase your eyepieces separately. So, let's get to the telescope. So, here it is. Um, the Quattro 150P. Um, as described on the website, it has a dual speed focuser, a coarse focus with the gray one on both sides, and then a fine focus with this little black one in the end um, to get some fine focus. Um, I heard from, from a lot of people that they don't like the focuser very much. In my opinion it's not that bad, um, as people make suggest. Um, but that might be because I'm used to the SCT uh, focuser, which is just moving the entire mirror, which is a lot worse than this. But if I, I'm going to attach the EAF to this, and then I think it should focus just fine. Um, I, I'm not expecting any big problems with that. Um, on the top here is a finder shoe bracket. If you want to attach some kind of guide scope or maybe um, the actual finder shoe or the finder scope that's supplied with it. Um, I'm going to first of try it with off axis guiding because I have it already set up. But I might also try uh, the guide scope. Let me grab it very quickly. So this is my guide scope. It fits in here quite nicely. Like that. So then I have a guide scope. But what I've found is when I attach this or screw it in, let's see if I can show it to you. You 
is that with my guide scope I have uh, two dovetails, one smaller one and one bigger one. Is that when when I tighten this up, it'll go against the top one. I don't know if you can hear it, but it, it's not a very nice sound. And it also doesn't it it makes sure that I can't tighten it all the way. And this there is a little bit. Ah, it's now gone, but there can be a little bit of play um, within the guide uh, within the guide scope um, within this uh, area here. Um, then I'll show you inside of the scope. If you remove this cap here, which by the way I like this mechanism quite a lot. It's it has uh, little lips like this, which makes sure that the this the, the cap stays in quite nicely and doesn't get loose. It has four very small spider veins here and a primary mirror at the back, so the light comes in through here into the main mirror in the back, then gets reflected by this mirror here. And then it up into the eyepiece over there. Um, so you have to, you're gonna have to collimate it quite often because of these veins that are very thin, and I don't expect them to hold collimation very well. Um, and thus, before every session, you have to at least check collimation, and you'll probably have to recollimate as well. So if you, if you don't like collimating, uh, this is not the scope for you. Um, but for me, I think the collimation is not that big of a deal. Um, I'm already used to it with my SCT. And I had a Newton before. Um, it was a lot slower, F5. But I didn't find collimation that, that annoying to do. Um, but yeah, that's the scope. Uh, one other thing I want to address though, is I don't think I can show it to you, but at the back there is a little bit of a gap between the mirror and the body of the scope, and thus the light can go through through the back here and cause light leaks, and that can show up in your images in all type of weird ways. So what I saw a um, buddy of mine do on the Astro Forum, the Dutch Astro Forum, is he put, put a hat or something around the uh, back of the telescope, thus making sure that there's no light leaks from behind. Uh, Quiff also said that there could be light leaks from the focuser here. I haven't been able to test that because I am still waiting for the adapter M48 to M42. Um, but that was, that, that was it for this video, um, I'll keep you up to date for the first light, uh, I'll, I'll create another video about it, um, and I might actually give away data as well, because, well, I'm at 500 subscribers, so I gotta do something, right? Um, thank you all for watching, and I wish you all clear skies.